Hey, ayo, ayo dua. So um, I'm happy to be here with you. I'm Said from Dark Side Records. I'm very happy to host today our friend Ron Bumblefoot Tall. Bonsoir, mes amis. C'est mon plaisir. Man, we're very happy to have you, man. We are very glad to have you here. So this is the first. This is the first um, episode of the MCE, the uh, Moroccan uh, Close Encounters. Uh, I'm also very happy to present Umayma. Uh, Hey there, that would be me. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we are very happy, very proud to have Ron uh, in the first uh, episode of of this uh, of this long, Journey. I hope, um, yeah. series of uh, events, small events, but very important for us actually, and also for the Moroccan scene. So thank you again, Ron, and I will leave the mic to Maima to manage <laughs> this encounter. Thank you again, Ron. Thank, thank you so you. much for, for responding to our invite and thank you for joining us today. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll be calling for Zach right now so he can join us. Please come. Have fun. <laughs> we'll try to. Hello. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> How you doing? Good. Nice to see you. So, Love to have, as always. So Jack, uh, Zach is joining us. He's one of the greatest and finest artists here in the scene of Morocco. Um, pleasure meeting you. My pleasure. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and Yassine is on your side right there on the screen. Can you see him? Uh, do I see who? The guy on the screen. Yes, mean down here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah down there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the our... biggest face on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Great. Uh, first question will be, how did you come up? with the uh, bumblefoot as a stage name it's interesting <laughs> question. That's I'm silly, man. yeah we found a lot of answers on the internet but we would like to have like a fine one from you mm -hmm. okay so it had to be about 30 years ago and my wife she was a girlfriend at the time and she's a veterinarian she was just going to school for it and i would help her study one of the diseases was called ulcerative protodermitis known as bubble and i remember i wrote a song for my band it was like and then the words were like about the superhero <laughs> So it started with that. That's how it started. And then on the side, I would make these silly little instrumental guitar songs. And that started growing where these songs started getting on compilation CDs and things in the early 90s. And then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? This Bumblefoot song, it feels like it needs a different vibe. And I ended up writing a new Bumblefoot song. <laughs> that sort of had this pink panthery kind of feel to it. It was like it had that swing and that jazzy, but something slightly off. So it had this riff like. Bumble. <laughs> ended up on one of the compilation CDs and then I got a record deal and I was on an, uh, a label called Shrapnel Record mm -hmm. and this is the label that put out all the guitar music they did Paul Gilbert, Jason Becker, Marty Friedman, everybody and uh, I was on this label so I did an instrumental album and I told the label I was like all right I got this crazy idea we are going to call the album The Adventures of Bumblefoot. And it's going to have this superhero creature. It looks like a comic book kind of thing. And all these like burning buildings and dogs vomiting and all the stuff on the ground. And yeah, right now for second questions. You're like going through the questions without you even knowing. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. That's what we want. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I'll make them flow. So then I uh, took 12 different animal diseases. 
Bumblefoot, Orf, Scrapey, Blue Tongue, Strawberry Footwap, <laughs> Fistless Withers, Ick, all the weirdest uh, you know, animal diseases I could find and named every song after a different animal disease and then wrote a song to match what the name meant to me musically. And that was my first album that came out in 1995. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that's a good long time ago. Time flies. Two years old. So, so 1995, this album comes out, and then I'm starting to do a lot more touring with the band, starting to do international touring. So I was like, you know what? The band needs a new name. And the music is kind of weird, and so I started calling the band Bumblefoot. So now it went from a song, well, it went from a disease to a song to an album to a band. So now is the name of the band. And being the front man of the band, I'm singing, I'm, I'm playing guitar, I'm writing, I'm pretty much doing everything. And by choice, it's just that I moved quickly. So I ended up just contributing the most. And, and it was it eventually, it was more like a solo thing, just because I was doing everything. So it became more like a nickname at that point. So the band and being the front man of the band, uh, it became, I became Bumblefoot. Bumblefoot. It became your identity. I mean, you're stuck with it forever. <laughs> I know. What did I do? No, but hey, hey I mean, don't be upset. You, you, you actually created exactly. a superhero. Like, it, it's, it's something great. Not a lot of people actually get to do that. So, so what I should do is maybe I should make a comic book now and do a Bumblefoot exactly. comic book. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Yassine, what do you think about what he answered? Uh, well, I think Bumblefoot is a legend mm -hmm. first, yeah, a legend for for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, category should write a book mm -hmm. and make a movie mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> about yourself and about Bumblefoot's story. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a lot of stories. <laughs> yes, well, I most think of so. I can't tell. I think so. <laughs> So the thing is, like, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I've been I've been following you for for quite some time, you know. And I just like I've just seen you playing where, with uh, Joe Satriani and all the big legends out there recently from Joe's uh, recent project. Um, actually, I, I I adore the majestic way that you are approaching technicality when it comes to your playing. So I would like to ask you, what is uh, your approach to come up with impactful riffs and licks and chops that actually um, Get stuck in our heads. Uh, well, first they have to be stuck in my head. Then maybe I'll grab my phone and do a little voice memo and just just long idea. <laughs> and then a month later, I listen back. I'm like, what is this? It happens internally, and all music does. If you think about it, everything we say, it's the impression, feeling inside us. So all the music happens before I ever play anything. Music doesn't happen from the hand. Music is pulled to people from your or anybody. So that's pretty much the problem that is just a feeling, idea, something, what it is, and then I feel like I have to tell it, but instead of through words, or maybe through words, just through these words, through language and music. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, just regarding the Sons of Apollo project, how the idea is, is coming? How uh, 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 how can I say this? How do you manage to gather all the legends of music, <laughs> like Mike Portno, <laughs> you know, and uh, all these members on one band, and then create some kick-ass music? Yes, how the idea is so, coming? Sons of Apollo, that band, you know, it had there was a lot of background before the band got together uh, uh, with Billy Sheehan and me. Um, we did jams together with Ray Luther Born and like Man uh, with Mike Morton and a bunch of me, Mike, and Billy have played, and I've done uh, guest guitar work for an album. And with Mike, we go back pretty far as well to the Nam Jam, and I played Mike's son first album that uh, Gold Band had done. Uh, we played together. We toured for a week together doing that. Uh, so there was a lot of what we did together. There was a music crew called Nation at Sea, 
and it was Mike, Derek, and Billy playing at that, and I joined them, and we played together at that. And after we did a few songs, Derek said to me, we should form a band. And that was in 2014, 2015, like that. And Mike and I, we always talked about a band together at some point. So in early 2017, he emailed today. So we talking about doing a band. Well, me and Derek, we have the idea of this, this band, the, you know, with Billy and Don Soto singing. I'm a huge Soto fan from the old... Yeah, it's a great singer. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great so singer. Like, yeah, let's do this. It's kicking Absolutely. Us, yeah. Uh, and again, for the kind of Apollo music, uh, 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 songwriting process, uh, I think that uh, on the most of your songs, we cannot separate lyrics from the music, for example, The God of the Sun is my favorite song of Sons of Apollo, The God of the Sun. And I think that the lyrics uh fits with the music 100 percent okay well that's yeah it that's fits with the music. how do you do that uh, well first it starts off where uh when we're in the process of writing ideas for these songs there's an email thread of me and derek and my mom and i will record a little song idea like some little at my studio and send it to them. And they say, good, let's put it in the hat. You know, play down hat where we throw all the ideas in. And then Derek heard the idea and he sent it to Mike and I and me and, and we say, great, let's put it. After a few months of an idea, get together, the three of us, and start putting together. And that's pretty much how it happened. And after a week, all the ideas come together and arranged, we have all the music. And Billy, for the first album, Billy was on tour, and then halfway through, he got to enjoy that. And then when the music is all done, Jeff listens to us once and how can they turn these into songs? So Jeff can sing anything, make it song. Without that, it sounds music. And then Jeff brings it all together. So okay. Jeff comes up with lyrics and melody to it all. And that pretty much happens for himself. <laughs> Yeah. And then the part of, uh, I think, oh, man, it's my favorite song of the band. It's I'm going to just my favorite song of the band. Yeah, 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 go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank go you. Ahead. I'm going to give the mic to my friend here, Zach for the very following questions regarding the, the, the different artistic ideas. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that you, I mean, as a guitar player, I know that sometimes we get stuck into the habit of picking up the guitar and start noodling and trying to find the, you know, uh, some good jobs and just, just hang out with the guitar and your favorite instrument. Um, do you usually have a like some favorite mods that you approach or like some uh, specifically like some technical uh, approaches when it comes to just jamming along, or just like uh, have a favorite key or, or something of that sort? Good question. Very good question. So, when, let me put this guitar, don't fall. Okay, good. And so, wow. that, okay. I find oh that. My gosh. Yeah, we weren't expecting that, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, your, that's your signature, man. Let's get some sound. Let's see what we got here. So, music lesson time. <laughs> okay. Take that and you start to change the notes and move them a little bit. So maybe put it there. Take the fourth note. So mystical. Yeah. Brings out like brings out the desert vibes. And stuff. Yeah, that's one of my favorites that I always use. Uh, I guess you can call it a Lydian flat seven, or you can call it a melodic. Uh, so something like that, and then I also like to uh, 
take the, the second note and maybe sharpen that up. So you maybe have something like... I wish I can do that. <laughs> that kind of thing. So I'll do that. And really, if you add one more note to it, you can have just the eight note. If you add the flat to match, there's a. So it's really just one step away from that. That kind of thing. So. Started singing, I was like, God, what is it? I like, it. Yeah. Uh, but then I made it into a good story. Should have mentioned it. I thought about it like it having the, from the melody. I was like, all right, it's such this like dreamy melody that yeah. something that just so I had this idea of just sort of. <laughs> well, that's going. Yeah. Yeah. So, production wise, it all starts to come together. We get all these it becomes, it start with one thing. It could be a groove, it could be something you want to say, it could be a melody, anything. Think of it like a cake and layers for the instruments, like look at the ingredients. So mm. the flour it's, first. It's different layers that can make a perfect cake. I mean, it's a right. whole, exactly, it's layers. And the ingredients go into that bowl, but it there, and it becomes a cake. And then when you're recording it, that's when the things start going up and everything. It all goes back to food. Everything goes back to food. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is related to food. It's a happy time you can make a really good music, I presume. <laughs> it's so a kind of thing really in Morocco. We say like a full tummy is a it's a tummy that can make really good music. It's a common <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it <comfortable>. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I am really interested, Mr. Ron, Mr. Tal, uh, to uh, know more about like your early on influences that actually mm -hmm. impacted you mm -hmm. to adopt various various type of playing. Okay. Uh, growing up, so New York City is where I was born, where I've grown up. Sort of, I was living in Brooklyn, and then at the age of five, we moved to the next borough over, Staten Island. I would go over one of my friends' houses, knock on his door, and go on in and there would just be albums lying all over the place. Now this was 1975. So wow. oh, the 70s. So there were just phenomenal albums just lying all over the ground like throughout those years. I would see a Yes album. I would see a Paul McCartney album, an Elton John album, a Led Zeppelin album, wow. The Who, Pink Floyd, Queen. And these were albums that were just this was new music that was just coming out. What we would do is we would just pick an album that we'd just be lying around the house and we would just go into the room and, you know, into his room and put on the turntable and just stare at the speakers and just <laughs> listen. And we would hear all this amazing music. And then I was five going on six, it was the end of 1975. And put on this one album. It was very intriguing. The artwork. The album it had these four guys with these painted faces, weird painted faces, and yeah. we put it on, and we hear this crowd cheering, thousands of people cheering, and and the music just blew me away. It was the album Kiss Alive. So I heard that album, and as soon as I heard it, it just changed my brain. Yeah, and it was like that's what I'm. That is what I want to do with my life. But they're they be so excited here that I felt like I needed to that exciting energy that they just gave me and give it to everyone else that I can. Yeah. So I presume that album impacted your creativity through the way. 
that made me want to join the band. That made me want to start a band, write music, and everything. You know, what that uh, started becoming a big Beatles. So the Beatles, they love you. And just the beauty of music in a rock form. Mm -hmm. But it was Kiss that made me really get on the stage. They knew what they did. So I started. I didn't know how to play guitar, how to play everything. Is that my new favorite band? You knew the members of John Paul George, you know, Paul Gene A. Who they were, each of those made something important musically. It was like four back to the food, back to the food. four ingredients that were so strong. Yeah. Yeah. And you put those four things together in the one. So, I started writing songs and figuring it out. I from a tour and I didn't play it. it like I come here with my hands and just go. Yeah, free free sign. Yeah, that's good. And, and, and showed me how to uh, play it like over, which still makes me crazy, because this way, you can, this way you have to reach over. No sense. So then I wanted to start taking new lessons and really learning. But even before I lessons, I used whatever I had on my own up to that point. I wrote songs. I didn't have anything to think about. I'm just a child looking at writer. I haven't loved and lost. I mean, what have I done? Uh, so, so I wrote about planets because I was very interested in, in the planets, uh -huh. the solar system, and space, uh -huh. and the universe. So, Where is the like the first song I wrote uh, was called Jupiter in Nice. And I didn't know how to write a song, so all I could do is use what I'm hearing on the radio on albums. So I told the music from and tweet that a song called Five on the Run that came out, I think, in 1974. They were still playing it on the radio. I heard it, though. So their song went... It was like... My song went... Oh, okay. I stayed on the ice. And, and I started, and I was writing, and started recording too. I figured out how to record by taking a player, uh -huh. put it in the corner of the room, uh -huh. and we have our little cars and playing our, our simple little songs that we were writing. A foot away, and brother got the drum set. He got this Bugs Bunny drum set. He got it at the store and. And he would be 10 feet back so that he would be loud and overpowering. So 10 feet back, level, one foot away, that was our level. Now we had the music recorded. Then we would take another cassette recorder and we would play the music recorded on this one with this one facing it, recording. Put the faces right here and sing. La, 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 la. So now we're over the because we have our music and our vocals on yeah. this one. And we would go back and forth and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, so that, and I look back on the very important lessons. There are so many musicians that say, I can't, I can't because I don't have this much money, or I don't have this equipment, or I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't have a man. Nonsense. If a six year old kid in the 70s without internet or anything can figure out how to do it, anyone can. Now, all the information of the world in the palm of our hand and a exactly. on our laptop. There's nothing that we can't do. Yeah. So you don't need what you don't have. Look around exactly. right there. You just need to exactly. recognize it and Amen. be creative with it and use it. The same way we're creative making music, you have to be creative with everything around you. Around you, yeah. Yes. Sure thing. Jason, can you bounce on that for one? Uh... I have nothing to say about this, but I have a question. Go ahead. Can I? <laughs> okay, so uh, can I take this question? I was wishing uh, someday I have to ask, uh, uh, can I have to ask a professional rocker who do some touring, you know, 
with some tools and stuff because I have a band and sometimes we play a concert and I'm tired to play concerts. So, uh, I think my question is what are, uh, what can I call the rituals uh, to go to stage? I think before stage rituals, you know, to, to be, uh, to be over our energetics and stuff. I think, man, you have touring for three and four months and you play each day. And how you do that? I believe what she seems trying to say. Yeah. Like, what are the rituals and routines that you work out as a band, like yeah. to get into the mindset and the vibe? And how do you like get ready? Do you guys have like, for example, I know some modern bands that like they like to scream behind like uh, behind the stage before they go before going before to the stage. stage. Yeah. Right. For some people, they exercise. Uh, like, you know, lifting weights, push-ups and sit-ups and things like that. Uh -huh. A lot of singers that will do all their vocal exercises, you know. Wait for like an hour. I know other ones that just grab a towel and just and scream into it three times. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, and you, man, what are... Uh, uh, what is your secret? What do you You, yeah, yeah. Oh, you do it's always different. It's, you know, sometimes I will do, I will fast, uh, do that sometimes. Uh, a lot of times I just do a little vocal warm up, starting with like an hour before going on stage. I'm just walking around, just going to... Okay, so you relieve stress and uh, yeah. just doing those kind of things and just you know just relaxing and play okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Be very focused uh, uh, like breaking the anxiety exactly breaking yeah. Stage, yeah. Okay. so let me do a little bit of warming up and quiet and calm and then i i do uh but it's not always it has no like that uh, now it's like that. uh there were times where i remember must have been around 2007 before going on stage. I have to go to the bathroom of the room, and I would go to the bathroom. I would be kicking the wall repeatedly, so angry, like I had all this stuff that I just needed to, like, let so that I'm not bottling it up. And I would just be. Poor little wall. Yeah, exactly. What did Poor the wall do to you? <laughs> I was going to hit the wall because I need my hands. I didn't need oh. my feet. So I would just <laughs> let all this anger out. Yeah. I was an angry guy. And oh. I would just. You could just carry like a small little punching bag. Punching bag, yeah. yeah you like go that, that would have, have it all the way. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's what I would do. And then I would go on stage when I was in the. the Mindset of just letting out all of the, the energy, you know, yeah, the energy. Yeah. The anger, yeah. I believe you have the, the uh -huh. resource. Yeah, I, ha I have a question for you. Uh, what are other activities that you have besides music? Because I'm pretty sure that you have plenty more. Yeah, definitely. We would like I mean, to know it's, more. It's about... like it's all over your face right now that you can't <laughs> count them in your brain. But let's give us some like your top five favorite activities. Okay, well, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. I think you like cooking. Yeah. I like eating. Oh. <laughs> okay. I like you go back to five years. That's an activity. Wait. Activity number one eating. It doesn't <laughs> count. It doesn't so count. count. It's surviving. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. It's not cheating, man. It but I, I take it beyond survival. It's like competitive <laughs> eating challenges <laughs> where, where, you know, 50 pieces of sushi and okay. like, way too much food, uh, way too much. So, so I guess you could say overeating is one, uh, sleeping, that doesn't count either, I know. Uh, no, it counts, it counts, that's really good. Who's your favorite writer? My favorite writer? Yeah. Uh, songwriter or author? Author, writer. Oh, oh. Who? Mm. Mm. Are you good. more of a philosophy guy? Well, I'm trying to think of the last things that I've read. Uh-huh. Was it Paul Ruiz, The Four Agreements? Um, I'm trying to think. That I read mostly what I read. Uh-huh. A lot of just quick, short things uh, on stoicism. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. That's really nice. Yeah, so a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think... 
What have I read? You forgot? I can't remember. You remember 1967 and you forgot what you last yeah, read? Yeah, I mean, come on. See, that's, see, it's easier for me to remember something from when I was four than something from four <laughs> minutes ago. Oh, uh, that, that's the old age thing starting to kick in. It's like I'm forgetting. The, the sooner it, it happened, the more I forget it. And everything else is deeply etched into my brain and hasn't exactly. smoothed over. So, let's say I think the last things I read, Godel Escher Bach. It was a book. I don't remember who wrote it, though, but it was about the mathematician Kurt Godel, the musician J.S. Bach, and, and, and my favorite artist, Escher, who would do two-dimensional things that are 3D and just... Uh -huh. uh, and come how they related to each other or feel very similar, how they braid that sort of interwove between the three of them in the way they approach things. Okay. Um, but I'm trying to think who. Oh, okay, so besides reading, besides reading, what so other activities? You're going to keep. Oh, he's one of them. Uh huh. Uh, his book, I like. Uh, which is all like the power of now and this kind of stuff. It's all just about trying to become a better person. Uh, so a lot of that stuff. Let's see. Oh, I love watching movies. Really bad horror oh, movies. Yeah. Oh, horror movies, my favorite. Horror movies? Like the really bad ones. I, like. <laughs> I just saw one. Do not. I shouldn't recommend it. I shouldn't even say its name because it's so bad. But it's intentionally bad. It's supposed to be bad. Like, try to make the worst horror movie they could. <laughs> and in 2016, it's called The Greasy Strangler. Do not watch this with children. Because so you're, you're recommended, you're recommended <clears throat> not recommend this movie, not watch to anyone. it. Yes, I'm recommending My that not so watch it. Right now. Uh, That's it's good. like you're implicitly <laughs> telling us to go watch it without even without telling us. Okay. Yeah, the That's more good. I say don't okay. watch it, the more you're going to watch it. So, no, I do love watching a lot of movies, including a lot of old silent films from the 20s, uh, things like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, incredible mm -hmm. stuff. You, you'd be amazed because everything they did was real. There were no tricks. There were no cap, no CGI. It's all real. And some of these things really left you on the edge. Uh, they got pretty intense. And then you yeah. that in just old black and white with no sound. But the music is found. The, the 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 score to those films. I'll just say one last thing. My other passion uh -huh. is hot sauce, spicy. Sauce. This is not a pa passion hot sauce. Yes, making <laughs> spicy really? hot sauce. spicy things. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there is a whole culture of people that are all about spicy food. Wow. So I have my sauces that are. You know, out there for sale around the world, and and they've won awards and everything. And I'm really serious about my hot peppers, spicy. The wow. spicy the better. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're gonna love our food because it's, it's all spicy. spicy. Yeah. It's all good. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of last questions. Yep. If you have any ones in mind, so I'm gonna start with Yasin. Mm -hmm. uh, well. I, uh, I really don't have any questions, but I have a request. Uh -huh. I have a request if you come to Morocco anytime, man, you are most welcome. You can jump together. Oh, yeah, you are more than welcome. Oh, yes. uh, that's the first thing I want to do is let's get together with a bunch of you know Moroccan musicians and let's just yeah, play. man, you have to come. Wait, wait, you have to come here because, uh, because we are, uh, I I think we have good musicians here that are not famous, you know, uh, are not famous worldwide. For example, Sack here, the man here, he's good yeah. shredder. He's a very fine musician. Uh, 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 and unfortunately, that no one knows him, yeah, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> Although he's starting to cry here. <laughs> Please come save him. us here. <laughs> People in Morocco know him. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Is that? Yes. So, yeah, yeah man, you are most than welcome here if you come. Uh, yeah, you're more than welcome. Yeah, we can hang out. Yeah. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Great. I actually, I actually used to, used to think that when you know people, when they don't know you have the upper hand, actually it's the other way around. 
It is, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but uh, thank you both for, for, for being with us. But I have a, one last question. I mean, sure. what got you interested into the fretless? Mm. See? Okay. You have a challenge to not give us a very long answer, by the way. Oh, God. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it up. Throw it <laughs> like, 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 sum it up. <laughs> okay, when I was uh, younger, really starting around the age of 12 to maybe around 20, I would make my own guitars. I would modify my own guitars. I would do all these crazy things with guitars, and I would make my own, like a fretless guitar. I was, really I was terrible at it. And when I connected with it, company from France, Vigier Guitars, mm -hmm. and they're, they're made in France, and they make fretless guitars, and they gave me one in 1980, and I immediately started with it. It became a big part of what I do and, and music, I'm so now to the point that I need both at once. So, <laughs> so that's I mean, the shortest answer. That's the shortest answer. And you're, very, and you're very good at it, so... Yeah. Thank you so much for giving us... Thank you. This thank you so much. Really interview, and thank you for, for, for giving us your time, your precious time. No, my pleasure, and I'm so happy that I could be the first one of that. Uh, oh, that that's the that's honor, amazing. and uh, I'm grateful that you, you have... Uh, can you give us, like, one last message to our Moroccan yeah, artist John community? Moore, artist. Sure. Don't watch the Greasy Strangler. It's a terrible movie. Do not watch it, especially not in front of children. Okay. I'm gonna let everyone do <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. Merci. Uh, shukran. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I hope to see you all for real, face to face. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. Yeah, no, we can't wait when for the it. world really? allows for it, hopefully one of the first places that it can okay. go yes. to come to you all so that we can <laughs> make some music together and just celebrate life and enjoy ourselves. And a great time would be a great gift for me. So thank you so much. Sure. Thank you um, so much. I'm going to leave, leave my space for, yeah, for, for say, so for have some kind of words. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for, for your time and the valuable information that you provided with, with us and the inspiration. Keep <laughs> inspiring us more and more. Provide us with more music. You're a legend and we really adore everything you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Please say, come and join us for the last word. Hi again. Hi again. Hello. Hello. Hey. Bonjour. So thank you very much, Ron. Uh, thank we are again very happy. Uh, very proud and we are blessed to have you uh, for this first uh, first episode of Mike, please. the MCE. Mike, please. And Mike, please. Check Mike. <laughs> and uh, I think that I don't have questions for you. <laughs> so thank you. Just thank you. Uh, all the team, uh, Dark Side Records, uh, are very happy to have you. And I think that it will not be the last time with you, Ron. Good. Good. I hope yeah, I hope not. not. Hopefully again soon. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you much. Thank you so much. Peace out, people. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you. Take Peace. care. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.